Every time you went to visit the doctors, you probably saw a stethoscope hanging from their neck and thought, what a cool device. If you were a curious kid, you might have even tried using it when the doctor wasn't looking. But you don't need to sneak tries anymore since you built one from scratch yourself. Even though you can't actually use this to treat patients, you can definitely use it to try and hear your own heartbeat, stomach palpitation sounds, and anything else you find curious. Now that you have made the device and have it on hand, let's try and understand the principles and concepts behind its working. We can also look into its real-world applications and types. Apart from the foam, binding wire, and rubber pipe, you can find all the other materials required at home itself. These three will be available in the market at an affordable rate, but might be a little hard to find. We will provide you with these materials so that you can experiment with different variations and understand the concepts behind this device completely. You built this DIY stethoscope without any gadgets or electronics that manufacturers nowadays use and so you, better than anyone else, can understand some of the difficulty René Theophile Hyacinth Lyonek must have faced back in 1816 when he invented this device. One of the theories of how he invented the stethoscope is one of amusement. Apparently, Lenek used a hollow wooden tube to listen to the heartbeat of his female patients so that he won't have to come into improper contact with them by touching his head to their chests. He then discovered that the wooden tube amplified the sound of the heart beating, making it easier to hear any anomalies. He called this invention a stethoscope after the Greek words for chest, which is stethos, and the verb to examine, which is skopein. From 1816 until the 20th century, the wooden monaural, intended for use for only one year, stethoscope underwent multiple changes, evolutionary additions and fixes to become the modern, life-changing stethoscope we see today. Most modern stethoscopes are binaural, that is, the instrument is intended for use with both ears. Stethoscopes comprise two flexible rubber tubes running from a valve to the earpieces. The valve also connects the tubes to the chest piece, which can be either a bell-shaped piece to pick up low sounds or a flat disc for higher frequencies. The bell-shaped piece is known as the bell, and the flat disc as the diaphragm. The stethoscope is used mainly for the detection of heart murmurs, irregular heart rhythms, or abnormal heart sounds. It is also used to listen to the sound of air moving through the lungs in order to detect abnormalities in the air tubes and sacs found in the lung walls. After building the stethoscope, if you tried listening to the sound of your heart beating, you would have heard a lub-dub, lub-dub sound with small intervals. How are you hearing a faint sound that your heart is making inside your body through this instrument? Stethoscopes are usually of two types, acoustic and electronic. We have made a replica of an acoustic stethoscope and will be studying the working principle behind this. So how does the stethoscope pick up sound and transmit it to the ears? Acoustic stethoscopes operate on the transmission of sound from the chest piece via air-filled hollow tubes to the listener's ears. The chest piece usually consists of two sides that can be placed against the patient for sensing sound. A diaphragm or a plastic disc or bell which is a hollow cup. If the diaphragm is placed on the patient, Body sounds vibrate the diaphragm, creating acoustic pressure waves which travel up the tubing to the listener's ears. If the bell is placed on the patient, the vibrations of the skin directly produce acoustic pressure waves traveling up to the listener's ears. The bell transmits low frequency sounds while the diaphragm transmits higher frequency sounds. In both diaphragm and bell, 
sound waves are created which travel into the rubber tubes. These sound waves keep reflecting off the walls of the tube without losing too much amplitude and travel all the way to the other end to the listener's ears. But how does the sound get amplified? Sound waves are transmitted in the air in all directions. So when your heart beats, the sound it makes travels in all directions from the chest, but is faint. The bell, which is funnel-shaped, captures a lot of sound waves and directs them all towards a single narrower point. All these waves create larger sound waves, which reach your ears as a louder sound. And the diaphragm, whenever it vibrates, moves a column of air up and down the rubber tube, which travel to your ear as sound waves and you hear sound. Since the diaphragm is of a large surface area, larger than the column of the air that moves in the tube, the air must travel more than the diaphragm, causing a magnification of the sound wave, producing a louder sound. Now that you understand the working of the stethoscope, about how it picks up sound waves and then pushes these waves into the tube, thus amplifying the sound, you can make variations of the stethoscope to test these theories further. You could make a model with a longer tube to see if the result is any different, if the amplification increases. You could also try using a wider bell instead of the 4 or 5 cm diameter. Theoretically, if the diameter increases, the bell should be able to catch more of the sound waves and thus magnify the sound further. But does this work experimentally? If not, why do you think it doesn't? Why are the stethoscopes we see today the sizes that they are and not larger or smaller? Try building different variations to understand and question these concepts. Let us know what you come up with. Some experiments that you could try. Ask a volunteer to rest in a chair for some time, then put the stethoscope against their chest and listen to their heartbeat. Count the number of times it beats in one minute. That is one lub-dub sound is one beat. This is the resting heart rate of the volunteer in beats per minute or BPM. You may try the same thing after exercising. Ask the volunteer to do jumping jacks or run on the spot for around one minute. Then ask them to sit and immediately try and listen to their heartbeat through the stethoscope. Count the number of times it beats in the next 15 seconds and multiply this by 4. This is their heart rate in beats per minute after exercising. Now why do you think we count only for 15 seconds this time and not 1 minute? How did the heart rate change after exercising and why did it change in this manner? If you did the same experiment on a marathon runner or someone who exercised regularly, would we have different results? You can try testing the sound. Place the stethoscope on a volunteer's or on your own left chest and find the spot where you can hear the heartbeat the loudest. Now keep inching away from this spot. Do you still hear the heartbeat at the same volume? Do you hear it at all? Why do you think you can hear the heartbeat faintly in some places and not at all in another? Has this got anything to do with sound waves? While inhaling and exhaling, so place the stethoscope on your chest, near your lungs and listen. Take a deep breath, hold it for three seconds and then slowly release. What do you hear? Can you hear your lungs? Do you hear a different sound while breathing in as compared to breathing out? Try hearing this with both the diaphragm and the bell. Is there any difference? What about before and after you eat? Use your stethoscope to listen to your stomach and intestines for bowel movements. Listen before breakfast and then after any meal. Is there a difference? Do you hear a soft gurgling noise? What do you think this is and is it normal? If someone had diarrhea, how do you think his or her bowel movement sounds would differ? Some scientific terms. Binaural is the instrument is intended for use with both ears. Bell, in the case of the stethoscope, one side of the chest piece. It is bell-shaped and used to pick up low-frequency sounds. The diaphragm, which is the other side of the chest piece, is a flat disc that vibrates and picks up high-frequency sounds. Heart rate is the speed of the heartbeat measured by the number of contractions of the heart per minute. Heart murmur, these are heart sounds produced when blood flows across one of the heart valves and that are loud enough to be heard with a stethoscope. 
Bowel is a part of the alimentary canal below the stomach, that is the intestine. We have already talked about and experimented with all the applications of the stethoscope. Just as a quick recap, a stethoscope is a device used by a medical professional to listen to sound made by a body, mainly heart, lungs and bowel. The stethoscope is a very important tool in the diagnosis of a disease and helps medical professionals determine if our body is functioning normally. It is also a fantastic implement because it helps doctors in making significant diagnoses through a purely non-invasive method with no side effects or inconvenience to the patient. We hope you enjoyed making this instrument and have had fun experimenting with it and now also have a better understanding of how it works, what the parts of a stethoscope are, how sound is magnified and how it was developed. Most importantly, understand its use and significance in everyday life, which we often take for granted. Goodbye.